I want to talk about the importance of experiences. Um, it's a bit like, you know, everybody buys gadgets and it's pushed, pushed by this, by that, by it. It's a waste of time and money, to be honest. You know yourself, if you buy a phone, how long does that excitement last for? Um, probably till the first payment comes in or maybe um, a couple of days max. Reality is, they add no value to your life, most of these things. You buy, um, for example, I use the what am, my Samsung phone. Um, it's probably two or three versions older than the latest version. Does mine do anything less than the new phone? The answer is no. The, uh, the reality is, it doesn't. I mean, it's like when you see the new Samsung, the promotion is, oh, it's more rounded. Does it matter? The answer is no. It makes no difference whatsoever. I'll tell you what does make a difference is when one phone's £100 and one's 500 Why? You don't need to invest in this nonsense. What's of more value, though, is doing stuff for the day. Um, whether it's you or whether it's uh, taking somebody else out for the day. Those memories are more important. And also long lasting. Um, this morning I asked my son about the Eiffel Tower. Um, now the first thing is he remembered the Eiffel Tower from last year. Um, but B, he, he also <laughs> is, I asked him what he enjoyed most about the Eiffel Tower and he said the play part. Um, the play, the way the Eiffel Tower is the down to the right there's a play park with a fireman's pole and stuff. He loved that more than the, the actual Eiffel Tower. Now, it's funny, but at the same time, he will remember in the, throughout his childhood going to the Eiffel Tower. Yes, he remembers the tower, but the most exciting bit was his play park. Um, and that, that's the sort of stuff that's long-lasting. That's something of a lot of value because those are memories. They're priceless. Um, I remember in my own childhood, we had driven across from Germany to pick up a ferry at the Hook of Holland and I think we'd arrived five or seven hours early, something crazy like that. So we were stuck on the port area. Um, the cars overloaded, you know, I think there was like a small 14 inch TV at my feet, which was, let's say small, the screen was small, but these were back when they were CRT, the big uh big tvs crt by the way is cathode ray ray tube um but the the point being is squashed up i'm in the car my father's driving i got my two brothers my sister and my mother in the car as well um and the memories are like sitting looking across at all the snow because it was like snowing while we were there and my father had me switch the car on like every 40 minutes to warm the warm the vehicle up because the whole thing was freezing you know I, that's a memory now may, at the time it's not so comfortable and nice being freezing cold but you look back on those memories thinking that the stuff you did as a child that's got more value than buying a phone i remember action man and stuff like that um but does it have the same importance to me? Well, the only reason I remember the action man so important is I remember paying, playing outside where we were living in Ireland because um, my father was there uh, just after the troubles. And we were sitting, you know, I was very young. I was, we were, me and a friend were playing um, in the street. Um, where when you, I could see the rioting taking place, you know, the, the truck on fire, people throwing uh, petrol bombs, because we were so sort of like sat here, but it's like at a di distance at the end of the street going past. So you got the you know the, the rows of houses like that, but the rioting's actually going that way, um, past the end of the street. So you you you're not close to it. But you sat there watching as a, as a uh, riot tourist because it's 
just happening right in front of you. Those memories I have. The memories of the Berlin Wall going, coming down and living in Germany at the time um, with the British military and the protests of British go home that you never seen in the media. Um, I remember those. I remember the IRA threats where we had um, armed soldiers on the school buses as a kid. Those are, for a lot of people, would be negative memories, but they're not, because it's my childhood. But on the same time, I did a lot of other stuff. I went yachting as a kid. I, I remember the, going fishing on a regular basis with my father. Even into my adulthood, I still went fishing. Those things carry on throughout life, and they're not expensive. You know, they, this is the thing. These things are what make a person. All the gadgets and stuff, it's just an obsession with keeping up with the Joneses. You don't need it. It's not helping you. It's not making your life easier. It's often getting people into debt for no apparent reason. Um, but it's like now I'm looking at doing uh, gliding um, because I seen something the, the other week um, after being at the air show and I thought, I'm going to go and do that. That's an experience I'll have for myself that I enjoy. Um, there's zoos and stuff where we are in Spain. Uh, as you probably, you might have seen our photos when we went to the uh, Rio or Elche, the safari park. Um, but those are experiences people have for life. And they're far more important than buying gadgets. Gadgets are so short lived, it's unbelievable. A lot of it is forced on people based on insecurities. It's a false insecurity, in fact, because this keeping up with the neighbors and stuff, it's all about marketing. It's been marketed that way. It doesn't matter. You know, as a, you know, going back years ago, you know who the poor kids and everybody was. It didn't matter. You know, they go, oh, what's his name's poor? Do you think it affected them in life? I don't think so. Because the poor kids are poor kids. These days, it's all false face. Everyone's pretending that they're doing great, yet racking up more and more debt. So, everybody's the poor kids. <laughs> um, so, yeah, have a think about it. But also, I want to make this point that if you're having a crap week or whatever, start looking for things you can do outside of work. Start looking at things you can do as a, with a friend, family, partner, whatever. Get into something that's outside your day-to-day -day stuff, because you'll find it enhances your life so much. But also, it will make you a happier person because I know myself coming back this weekend, back to Spain, as you can see, the important bit for me was getting on that plane. The work has been a bit of a drag lately. Um, we've got so many contracts that are waiting to kick off, but I've been unable to get back because nothing's actually started. Um, so I've had lots of meetings, had to be in London, Middlesbrough, wherever I needed to be. Um, consumes my time but also removes my uh, scope or ability to see ahead for a calendar to say I'll book my flight for that day because I'm going home. Couldn't do it because I could be in uh, Aberdeen on a Friday and unable to get back to the airport in Birmingham. Um, it's just the way the, the work is at the moment, not the way I like it, but I grumble about it. No, I focus on booking some holiday um, and then turn around and say, I don't care what's happening, I'm going on holiday uh, back home. Um, and I just make it happen. Um, fond memories, the kids see me when I got home. Um, good memories for me, good memories for them. But also every time I come back, I keep thinking more and more, I need to be away less and less. All right. Thanks for watching.